So I'm trained as a geneticist and I've applied that to diseases that um, impact the brain uh, through genetics. In particular, I work on dementia, I also work on mental illness and, and use that uh, sort of common language of genetics to help us understand those things. In the area of dementia, we've made huge progress in understanding some fairly rare forms uh, that are genetically caused, so early onset Alzheimer's disease, for example, and through international collaborative studies, we've actually been able to really categorically prove some of the disease sequence processes and use that knowledge to now initiate clinical trials, which we hope can really short circuit the very long and protracted process of developing new drugs. So that, that, that's from the um, dementia side. Uh, from the mental illness side, it's turned out to be so much more complex than we thought it was going to be. Uh, very small amounts of risk coming from many, many different genetic variants, but trying to put that together and understand how some people are more at risk of developing mental illness, and in a converse way, how some people have, in a sense, a, a predisposition not to illness, but to resilience. Because again, if we could understand um, resilience better, then we've got the tools and the ability to actually uh, help stop um, those mental illnesses attacking us. Neura, Neuroscience Research Australia, focuses on diseases, disorders of the brain and the nervous system. Uh, so we work in a whole range of areas. For example, we work on, on movement, um, how our muscles and our um, brain and nervous system control movement and how that can go wrong. Uh, one of the biggest single causes of admissions to hospitals is through falls. So if we can help to prevent um, falls through better understanding of balance, of muscle strength, um, of posture, of gait, then that's a huge benefit that we can have to the nation by reducing the single biggest emergency room caseload, falls, particularly in the elderly. Uh, if we move back to um, uh, the very young, uh, mental illness is the biggest single disease group that affects young people. So we have a range of people working on things such as autism, um, schizophrenia, uh, bipolar disorder. Uh, and then as we age as a population, um, some of those degenerative conditions affect us. Um, things like um, stroke, Parkinson's and Alzheimer's and dementia. So we have a, a range of research groups that span all of those different areas, but principally they're diseases that affect our brain and our nervous system, so we also then have a whole bunch of common um, tools and approaches, uh, using MRI imaging to study people's brains in life, uh, using the Sydney Brain Bank to study donated brains after life, so that we can actually put together a holistic understanding about what's going on, but also share the, 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 the skills and knowledge from one area with another. The um, diagnosis of so many of uh, the conditions that affect us uh, is still so poorly understood. We don't have good markers that allow you to do that, that simple blood test. You know, go to your doctor, blood sample, doctor goes away and comes back and says, I'm sorry to say this is what is affecting you, but I'm pleased to say here's a treatment. Um, so for example, if we take Alzheimer's disease, the most common form of dementia that is increasing um, as our population ages, not because it's becoming uh, more common, but because there are more of us that are older and it's an age-related condition. In life, you have diagnoses of possible and probable Alzheimer's, because uh, we, at this point, don't have a definitive test in life. Uh, medical research has developed some fantastic new ways of imaging the brain and we are on the cusp of being able to potentially make those diagnoses in life, but we have to wait till after life's finished to actually look at the brain to make the definitive diagnosis of Alzheimer's disease. Now if I have a drug that works for Alzheimer's disease but doesn't work for say frontotemporal dementia, it's pretty important that I have your diagnosis correct before you get treated. So you can see why diagnosis after life at death is really not an acceptable outcome, why we need medical research to actually help to solve those problems so that we actually have the treatments for the people that need them and we aren't giving treatments to people that they won't work on.